talented people here, don't we? <sighs> Unitarian Universalists exhibit a high degree of theological and philosophical diversity. We are atheists and agnostics and Buddhists and humanists and pagans and Christians and Jews and searchers and those who can't define their theology with one word or label. But despite our differences, we developed communities and have covenanted together to respect one another and affirm our differences of belief. And there's one more thing that we've covenanted with each other. Perhaps it's interesting that Unitarians, Universalists and Unitarian Universalists have a shared history of involvement in public witness, involvement in social change and social justice, dating back to the beginning of this country and continuing to the present. I have to tell you that before I joined Unitarian Universalism, I hadn't been involved in social justice. That's not to say that I didn't participate in acts of mercy, helping those less fortunate than myself. As a teenager, I helped collect food and clothing for the homeless. I worked as a, a summer camp counselor for those who are developmentally disabled. But at my heart, I knew our world was far from perfect. And so what little I could do, I did. But I didn't think I could really change anything. I know I, when I was young, I saw the injustice, all of it around me. But how could I make a difference? A teenager in the 1970s. Maybe I couldn't, I don't know. But I will say that when I started attending First Jefferson Unitarian Universalist Church in Fort Worth, Texas, my exposure to social justice ramped up considerably. In the membership class that I attended, I was, I was given a card it said, 10 things most commonly believed among us by Reverend Day, uh, David O. Rankin. And then among the other things that it said, it said, we believe in the ethical application of religion. Inner grace and faith find completion in social and community involvement. All people on earth have equal claim to life, liberty, and justice. This was the beginning of my journey from offering mercy to working for meaningful justice. I have to say, as a new Unitarian Universalist back then, I was, I was certainly more thinker and talker about justice than I was an actor of, for justice. Perhaps because I was so focused on my own spiritual journey, which had opened up since joining Unitarian Universalism. I grew up as a Catholic, and you were told what to believe and how to believe. And I needed to discern who I was, how I would believe, and, and how I would live that in the world. This is groundwork for me. And at that point, I looked to my congregation also, not just as a, a place I could go for this groundwork, but also as a sanctuary, away from all the people around me in the Bible Belt who spoke of pro-life, of needing more guns, of the benefits of the death penalty, 
and how I would go to hell if I didn't believe in a, a certain type of Christianity. So in those early years, I had that sanctuary, and I was breaking down old ways of seeing the world and restructuring my faith foundation and figuring out who I was as a Unitarian Universalist. But there was so much going on in the world. And I didn't hear our liberal voices out there. Throughout the 1980s, religious conservatives gained credibility in politics, asserting that their religious values should be incorporated into public policy to the exclusion of the values of other faith traditions. And their influence only increased through the election of President George W. Bush and then continued and continued through the election of Donald Trump. Their vision of, for the United States, indeed for the world, is one that results in, at least, at least as far as I believe, increased, results in increased oppression, discrimination, domination, reserving power for a small number of government and business elites. As a result, the gap between rich and poor has expanded and continues to expand here in the United States. And the exclusion of religious liberals from the civic dialogue was and is dangerous. At one of the first general assemblies that I attended, general assemblies are yearly denominational meeting, it was in Fort Worth in 2004. Unitarian Universal Association President, U UUA President Bill Sinkford, said that he was revisioning the focus of his role as leader of our denomination in the direction of Unitarian Universalism. He had the attendees there fill out questionnaires to help develop this new vision for himself as a leader and for our denomination. He later reported that one of the visions that seemed to be dominant among this, on this questionnaire was that you use one Unitarian Universalism to be a liberal religion with a voice in the community. And not just any voice, a voice that speaks clearly about our values. Now, I was still hesitant to be a liberal voice in the public square, but a spark came to life within me as I listened. One of our 19th century forebears, Reverend Theodore Parker, wrote, I do not pretend to understand the moral universe. The ark is a long one. And from what I see, I am sure it bends toward justice. And as Sinkford continued to speak that day, he referred to Parker's quote, saying moral values are more than just a particular opinion on a hot button topic in a divisive election year. Moral values grow out of our calling as religious people to work to create a beloved community. Moral values instruct us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to ask the question, who is my neighbor? We are called to be fundamentally inclusive rather than exclusive and generous of spirit rather than mean-spirited. As a community of liberal faith and equally liberal doubt, we have a historic opportunity to engage in interfaith and cross-cultural dialogue to discern a core morality that would bend the arc of our current moral universe 
toward compassionate justice in a pluralistic global society. Wow. Wow. Now, the word moral didn't hit the ears of some Unitarian Universalists with much acceptance back then. But I, as I listened, I heard that I needed to be part of the arc of the moral universe bending toward justice. It could not bend on its own. I could no longer stand on the sidelines if I really wanted to live in a world centered around the values of a beloved community for all. Now I want to pause for a moment. And I want to ask you why you attend or a member of, or a friend of, a Unitarian Universalist congregation? Is it a sanctuary for you? Away from all the other people who say hurtful things, or oppressive things, or destructive things? Is it a place where you can explore and, and affirm your own personal spiritual journey? A place where you can find friends, maybe friends who will accept you just as you are, fairly and compassionately caring for you. Is you, you Miami, a place where you can have your values of justice, equity, compassion, mercy, peace, affirmed when you walk in through these doors? Do you think you can find others here who will join with you in wanting to change the world, to make it a better place for all people, It's sort of a trick question. The truth is you can answer no to all of these questions and still be a Unitarian Universalist. Because we do not have a dogma that you must believe to be a member. But here's the thing for me today. When I am approached and asked, what is Unitarian Universalism? And I give my, my little elevator speech. <laughs> I emphasize that this is a place where you can be called to a responsible search for truth and meaning. And called to actively make the world a better place for all. That's not how I always describe Unitarian Universalism, and it may not be how I do that in the future. But today, that rings true for me. Reverend Dr. Patrick O'Neill preached about Henry David Thoreau and his spirituality, saying Thoreau, who left society for a time to sojourn in the natural world, felt the need to return, to be part of and profit to society because of the evils he saw around him. This was how he lived his faith. It was a moral obligation to him. And Thoreau reminds us to do at times, to do at any time, what we think is right. To take the risk to live our faith as part, and, uh, as part of and profit to the world. We must be a church that pokes the conscience, demand, demands our efforts to mend what is broken in the world, to heal what is wounded in our communities, to hold gently the sorrows 
and address lovingly the pain of those perennially left out on the margins of society. You know, the hopeless, the helpless, the war-torn, the hungry, the infected. For me, it is Thoreau and Parker and, and so many of our forebears who, exempl who are exemplars for me on my spiritual journey now. They lived their lives with balance, a spiritual quest and a prophetic spirit acting in the world doing justice. From the first congregation that I attended in Fort Worth to now here with you all at UU Miami, I'm always reflecting on what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist. And increasingly, I've realized I can't just focus on my own needs, spiritual or otherwise. From what I know of our forebears and what I've heard of, from my peers in various congregations that I've been part of, I've discerned that what I need to find, the path forward for me, is to be sure that I work for justice. It's easy, relatively easy for me to do the whole spiritual exploration. It's, it's my need. It takes intention to think about those beyond myself. Perhaps one of the reasons that it's difficult for me to think about those outside, and maybe for you as well, you know, beyond doing mercy, doing justice has risks. For instance, James Reeb, Reverend, James Reeb, who walked with Martin Luther King in Selma, Alabama, while he was killed while walking with him. And some of our congregations, even this one, have had crosses burned on their property. And many of our congregations, including this one, have had a Black Lives Matter sign stolen or destroyed. And many of our congregations, including this one's, who've rallied for LGBTQ rights or civil rights or Black Lives Matter or so many other issues, do not always have their voices affirmed in the public square. In fact, they may be yelled at or threatened or have some obscene gesture pointed their way. But my friends, Unitarian Universalists have persisted despite this because they envision a world that is better than what we have today. Our forebears helped get bandages and supplies to injured soldiers during the Civil War and after that experience realized that there needed to be some kind of an organization to help those hurt by the effects of war around the world. And so she started the Red Cross. Clarissa Harlow Barton. Another of our forebears after witnessing various cruelties committed upon animals in the late 19th century founded the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Henry Berg. After a massive race riot directed at black residents in Springfield, Illinois, the home of Abraham Lincoln, this led to seven deaths, the destruction of 40 homes and 24 businesses, 107 indictments against rioters. Another of our forebears co-founded the NAACP, Mary White Ovington. 
Another forebear, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, wrote a letter to President Kennedy regarding the proliferation of atomic weapons that resulted in a treaty that finally stopped this proliferation between Russia and the United States. That was Albert Schweitzer. Our forebears worked for the abolition of slavery, for civil rights, for women's rights, for so many rights and issues. It is a, a powerful legacy that we have inherited. I know, I know our forebears experience risk and pushback, and that's to be expected. But there was something else. Their Unitarian Universalist faith and community nourished their spirit, grounded them in their values, and empowered them for social justice. The first time I walked into a Unitarian Universalist church in Fort Worth, Texas, I felt nourished in spirit and grounded in values that made sense to me. Values of love and compassion and democracy, equity, mercy, justice. I wonder if you feel the same. And you know what I learned? I learned that justice work is love practiced in the public square. When you come through these doors, do you feel empowered to work for a better world? To work for justice? When I hear about our forebears, I feel empowered to work for social justice. When I read our seven principles, and they speak of justice, equity, compassion, and human relations, when they speak of the inherent worth and dignity of every person, I feel empowered to do social justice work. When I hear you come and talk to me about the work that you've done for justice, like the rally down in Homestead when you shut down the detention center for immigrant children, I feel empowered. When I am invited by you to participate in a rally like I was when we did a Black Lives Matter rally on Highway 1 last year, I feel empowered. For much of life, my life, I didn't feel empowered. I didn't feel I could make a difference. But the longer I've been part of a Unitarian Universalist congregation, the more a belief has grown in me that I really can make a difference. In the last 20 years, being a Unitarian Universalist minister, this is my 20th anniversary of being a Unitarian Uni Universalist minister, by the way, because of my, <laughs> thank you, because of my faith and my grounding in Unitarian Universalist values and history, I've lobbied legislators in four states, I have stood in rallies for LGBT, LGBTQ rights, rallies to stop a war, rallies to recognize Black Lives Matter. I've confronted pro-life protesters, spoken out publicly on gun violence, spoken out on same-sex marriage and reproductive rights. I don't know if I could have done these things or would have done these things if I had not felt empowered by Unitarian Universalism and by the people in this congregation and all the congregations I've been part of. And this, this congregation offers you the same opportunities for empowerment here in this community with these people you'll be supported and empowered to do justice work. 
As Thoreau said, must the citizen ever for a moment or to the least degree resign their conscience to the legislator? Why is every human a conscience then? I think we should be humans first and citizens afterward. It is not desirable to cultivate a respect for the law so much as for the right. So I invite you, no, I call you to look within yourself for what you think is right and work for that. Work for justice, equality, peace. Look in yourself. Find that work that you're called to do. This is part of our Unitarian Universalist, to call you to do the work from inside out. You can be empowered to do what you can, and perhaps even more than you thought you could, to make a world that is better, more just, more equitable, more peaceful for all. And so may it always be here at UU Miami.